Hello there, a very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Primetime News on TV1. The data that was erased from the National Medicines Regulatory Authority. What really happened was data relating to COVID-19 medical equipment and medicine deleted from there as well. We've got the details lined up for you here tonight. But first, look at your top stories. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Finance bill allowing undisclosed assets to be legalized, passed in parliament. Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikrama resigns from Advisory Committee on Communicable Diseases. Trade unions rally to protect the port. Will State Minister Cabral step down from his portfolio and give up his parliamentary seat? Tremor in Lunugamvehera, second tremor within two weeks. Myanmar shadow government declares national uprising against military rule. News first, headlines, main sponsor. Valuable Finance, best finance company. The finance bill that allows for undisclosed assets to be legalized was passed in Parliament with amendments today. 134 votes were cast in favour of the bill, while 44 votes were cast against it. People are only speaking about money laundering. They say that we are only imposing 1% of a tax to allow for black money to be laundered. What happens here is there may be some people who have not declared their income and that does not mean that the money they have is illegal. Those funds might have not been declared when they were filing their returns. We can give them an opportunity to pay that tax and provide an opportunity for that money to be included in our economy. This is the situation that the people in Sri Lanka in general have to face today. Our country is facing a severe foreign exchange crisis. Also, when locally the Treasury is suffering on these matters, I believe that we should find solutions to these issues together with the opposition. We know that there there is waste, corruption and malpractices. We accept it. In this year alone, we lost about 1,500 to 1,600 billion rupees that we were due to receive. This is more than the amount that we had estimated. You know that we received a massive income through the import of vehicles, but for about one and a half years. Import of vehicles were suspended. The income of the excise department reduces. The VAT income from Indian revenue reduced to about 75% to 80%. On the other hand, we know that there is an increase in expenditure. About 80% of the vaccines that we brought had to be purchased. We paid money for that. The use of oxygen increased twofold. We did not reduce any salaries. We did not reduce allowances. Remittances from expatriates reduced between 25 to 30 percent during the last three months. We have not failed to pay any loan installments and we have managed to reduce some debt as well. We are trying to make this country free of debt. Our policy is to obtain loans in a manner that will not impinge on the sovereignty or political independence of the country. We will take steps even in the coming years to obtain loans from the World Bank and the Asian Development Bank for projects that will benefit the people. If you go and discuss with the International Monetary Organization, 
We could get a moratorium or a debt restructure done and get loans that do not affect sovereignty of our country. You ask for the support of the opposition and we are ready to fully support you. Accept our opinions if you want or discard them. At a time when taxes have been reduced to such a level, I would like to ask you as to if it is right to give a tax write-off like this. We believe that the chairmanship of this Presidential Commission on Taxation, Honorable Professor W. D. Lakshman, he is currently the governor of the Central Bank. So if he said that this must not be done back then, I believe that he must inform the members of the Central Bank in length of why his stance has changed now. The government expects two things from this finance bill. One is granting a tax amnesty for those who have not declared their assets. Through this, we wonder if space has been provided for businessmen close to the government to evade taxes. For example, think that someone travels overseas and purchases a hotel on an island. He invests the money that he didn't pay taxes for. With this Finance Act, these people can just pay 1% of the tax and say that the remaining money has already been invested and cleanse themselves of everything. So, Honorable Minister, Sri Lanka will not receive any investment through that. You are trying to establish a financial city at Port City. If a wrong idea goes out like this, it will not be good for Sri Lanka. Port City ke financial city ka khata na hadra. Ito kote jaat chantre apni kya na meva ke varadi matya gyo thing eka apni ta hondo dayat ne. My city wante no gar mudal le mat tumata. I would like to extend my thanks to the finance minister. Most of the members in the house presented their facts, saying the country has enough money and that they will take Sri Lanka to the top. But for the first time in this house, the finance minister said there is an issue with the income of the state and presented many facts with regards to the trade deficit crisis and the shortage of the dollar to pay off loans. Are you ready to change the political landscape of the country? No. The farmers of this country have not declared their assets. Is there an issue with that? Has the fishing community in this country declared their assets? Has the general public of this country declared their assets? But there is one faction in this country. If they do not declare their assets, there will be an issue. A group of people who were involved with state transactions, who called for many tenders, defrauding massive sums of money, have not yet declared their assets. We all know that. There is a group of corrupt businessmen among clean businessmen who are close to the government, who have not declared their assets. There are ethanol, alcohol and antigen businessmen in that group. There is a group of state officials who have illegal assets. One of your election promises is to take over those assets. But what have you done? What is this government trying to do in parliament today? They are bringing laws so that people who earn black money for 1% of tax can reap the benefits. This is a law that was drafted by a small group of people. What does this law say? Even if people declare their assets, their identity will not be revealed. The opposition leader expressed his views on the finance bill that was passed in parliament this evening. The government today paved the way for people who earn their money through illicit means to pay up a small percentage and turn their black money into white money through this finance bill. Those people had to carry out these affairs under certain conditions. They had to pay 20 to 30 percent tax earlier. Now they will be able to do this by paying only 1 percent of the tax. What is this government trying to do? They are formulating policies that encourage the people who evade taxes, not the general public that pays the taxes. You will have no place in this country if you are a law-abiding citizen who pays your taxes. That is the message this government conveys to this country. Is the government doing the right thing in a country where the state income is reducing? Is this fair? Please put a stop to these uncivilized actions. <laughs> First time in the history of this country, we have tax amnesty being declared through a legislation titled Finance Act. Some important issues as to what the objective of this act, I say, is being covered up by the title to the act, which is Finance Act. Amnesties must never be given from time to time. It must be a one-off and that's it. Because once a country gets used to the fact that after a few years another opportunity will arise for amnesty, that encourages people to make money and not declare it. But the primary problem that we have in this country is that we don't have a proper mechanism to collect our revenue. Once you have this provision, then how that person came by that money, came by that taxable supply can never be gone into. And although the 
speaker from the government ranks just who preceded me said that terrorist financing uh, money laundering all of that is exempt from this yes it says it is exempt from this but money earned through those processes can be brought in and you cannot go after that person on that account the justification is that money is coming into circulation but it doesn't prescribe a minimum period for which that money must remain or invest in a uh, uh, property you can invest in a property Honorable Senator member State. please wind up I say urge the minister to abandon this process that is called a tax amnesty country will lose according to trade unions revenue officers trade unions who have publicly said which has Honorable not been member, counted I'm finishing up. sir which has not been counted that 300 billion loss will be incurred by the country as a result of this act and no government official has still countered that. The speciality of this bill is that it provides an opportunity to invest an amount equal to the undisclosed tax value in shares issued by a company, treasury bills issued by the central bank, credit securities issued by a company in Sri Lanka, and movable and immovable property. The relevant investments in this bill can be made before 31st December. If a person who does not invest and does not disclose any taxes voluntarily discloses them, only 1% extra will be added to the amount of tax payable. A number of parties, including the Samagi Jana Balavegya and the Janata Vimukti Perumuna, filed applications with the Supreme Court challenging the bill. This bill was passed in Parliament subject to the guidelines given by the Supreme Court. The Sri Lankan rupee strengthened to 203 against the US dollar today, matching the official rate maintained by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. According to market sources, a significant appreciation of the rupee comes after the central bank requested all banking institutions to maintain the rupee between rupees 200 and 203 per US dollar. In a statement issued to the heads of all licensed commercial banks and the National Savings Bank, the central bank said that excessive speculative behavior was observed among certain market participants, bringing in more pressure on the value of Sri Lanka's currency. Stressing that such excessive volatility would lead to extremely negative and undesirable effects on living conditions of the general public and hinder the country's long-term sustainable development. The central bank urged all banking institutions to maintain the rupee exchange rate within the already agreed range of 200 and 203 rupees. The central bank reiterated that the international value of the currency will be further strengthened with the recent receipts of the SDR allocation from the IMF and through swap agreements. It added that several other inflows of notable size are expected during the remainder of this year, which would gradually ease the pressure in the domestic foreign exchange market. Meanwhile, according to central bank and commercial bank data, the Sri Lankan rupee appreciated significantly against several foreign currencies today. The LKR appreciated against the euro, Japanese yen, British pound and Singapore dollar by 11% and the Australian dollar by 10.87%. Former Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, Dr. W. A. Vijayvardhana, tweeted that the move by the Central Bank to set the dollar at 203 rupees amounts to fixing a maximum retail price on the dollar. He adds that the experience from Myanmar in 2012 shows that such measures causes the black market rate of the U.S. dollar to rise. A member of the Minister of Health's Advisory Committee on Communicable Diseases resigned. What are the circumstances surrounding this resignation? We'll be back with the details after this short commercial break. Valuable Finance, best finance company. Do your online shopping with Sambole.lk. Home delivery and pickup now available. Sambole.lk. Welcome back to the news. Dr. Anand Vijay Vikrama has resigned from the Health Ministry's Advisory Committee on Communicable Diseases. However, the Minister of Health said that Dr. Vijay Vikrama has been requested to reconsider his decision. The Advisory Committee on Communicable Diseases was established to submit recommendations on how to control the spread of COVID-19 to the Director General of Health Services and the Secretary to the Ministry of Health. Introduction of quarantine procedures and intermediate treatment centres were some of the notable recommendations made by this Advisory Committee. We have to respect his uh, decision with regard to this matter. However, uh, we know that he has worked tirelessly to the benefit of the patients who have been admitted to the IDH hospital as well as he has given a valuable advice to the Ministry of Health from the 
beginning even well prior to the uh, uh, beginning of this pandemic we were working together and uh, he was instrumental in uh, developing the um, IDH hospital to cater any type of new or emerging diseases communicable diseases therefore uh, we have to appreciate his services and his knowledge and the experience in controlling the uh, COVID uh, pandemic and I would like to request to rethink about this decision and join us with this uh, situation. I believe if that is the case, this decision taken by him will draw the attention of the authorities. If such a situation has arisen, I believe it is important to act in the correct manner and to take the opinions of the experts. It is our responsibility to rectify this. I think this is what is important. Several attempts made to contact Dr. Ananda Vijayavikrama for a comment on the matter were to no avail. Anand Vijay Vikrama walked away today in silence. He did not even mention why he was leaving. There is no one on the committee to stop him from leaving. You do not have a right to leave that committee silently and do what you please. The people of this country have spent a lot of money and made many sacrifices to bring you to the position you are in today. We would like to clearly state that if Dr. Anand Vijay Vikrama resigned from the task force because of some obstacle to the control of COVID-19, which is an essential service to the people. He has a responsibility to reveal this reason before the people. We would like to clearly state that it is wrong for the officials to simply resign from these positions. They need to at least reveal the reasons why they are resigning from these positions. The Government Nursing Officers Association alleges that there are different approaches taken when providing vaccines to different districts. There is a low number of Pfizer vaccines coming into the country. The price is high and we can't store it. When this vaccine is brought, they are going and vaccinating the people in Hamantota. When we questioned them on why this was done, they said that it was the Ministry of Health that took the decision. We are wondering why the Health Ministry officials took this decision. Many countries are using the Pfizer vaccine on children and resuming schools. That is a vaccine that has been recommended for children. Children from grades 1 to 12 in our country are not receiving a proper education. Even universities are closed. If the vaccine was provided properly to university students, universities could have been reopened. If children who are sitting for their advanced level examination at the age of 17 were vaccinated, the examination can begin. We can resume education in the country. But this was not done. The World and the World Health Organization accept that the youth between 20 and 30 have best immunity. In Sri Lanka, the WHO's opinion is disregarded completely. The opinion of the specialists are disregarded. They decide on who they want to vaccinate. They vaccinate people in Hamantota and various age categories that they decide. They could have just used doctors in the government and other political appointees for this. Why do they need medical professionals? The COVID-19 vaccination drive was in operation across 380 centres island-wide today as well. Army Commander General Shavinda Silva said 9.4 million have received both doses of the vaccine so far. The Army Commander said the vaccination drive to administer the vaccine to those aged between 20 to 29, residing in the Colombo and Kalutara districts of the Western Province and in the Gaul district in the Southern Province, has commenced. The vaccination drive carried out by the Sri Lanka Army at the Vihara Mahadevi Park in Colombo continues to operate as well. Those aged between 20 to 29 were administered the COVID-19 vaccine at the Sugadudasa Stadium today as well. Vaccination drives are in operation in Gampaha, Kalutara, Horana and Gaul as well. The Health Promotion Bureau highlights that unvaccinated COVID-19 infected patients are likely to have a number of complications around three months post-recovery. Accordingly, the Health Promotion Bureau urged the public to obtain the vaccine immediately. A discourse has arisen on the hierarchical power of the Commissioner General of Essential Services to advise public officials including district secretaries and divisional secretaries. 
According to the Secretary to the President, the Commissioner General of Essential Services is authorized to advise public officials, including district secretariats and divisional secretariats, subject to Section 5 of the Public Security Ordinance. A statement issued by the Department of Government Information reads, the President recently acted to enforce the emergency regulations to stop traders from concealing essential food items, including paddy, rice and sugar, and inconveniencing the consumers. Raids on sugar and rice were carried out today as well. Colombo District Secretary Pradeep Yasaratna, officers of the Consumer Affairs Authority and the police carried out inspections in the 5th Cross Street in Petah and its vicinity today. Stocks of rice that were to be reverted to owners of large-scale mills and additional stocks were directed to Sathasa in order to be distributed to the public. <laughs> One hundred and sixty five megatons of sugar seized during a raid carried out at a warehouse in Uyandana, Kurunagala, was handed over to the corporate stores in the northwestern province today. A disagreement regarding the price of the stock of sugar arose when the stock was being handed over to the president of the Northwestern Consumers Association. <laughs> Our correspondents reported that the disagreement was resolved following discussions between both parties. Against a backdrop where the company that stored the data of the NMRA that was recently wiped clean is also responsible for storing data of the EPF, journalists questioned the cabinet spokesperson as to if data regarding the EPF uh, that is stored by the same company can be recovered in case that too is wiped clean. The data scam. EPF, ETF, EPF, ETF, the main issue here is that although data on 5,000 documents pertaining to drugs and medical equipment were provided to this company, Although there was an input, there had been no output. The company that was awarded this tender has a responsibility to recover this information. We always believe that we can recover all of these files. In addition, the medical companies also have in their possession a soft copy of these details. Until this situation is brought under control, the National Medicines Regulatory Authority has requested them to present hard copies of these documents for emergency registration. So there will be no issue with emergency medications. It was said that application to the NMRA would be accepted online during the lockdown. But several politicians of the government said that this was done manually. There is a contradiction here. There are other reports that suggest that the online system was to start on the 1st of September. Is it being done online or is it being submitted manually? You will have to get a statement from the chairman of the National Medicines Regulatory Authority on the exact dates. But you already know that steps are being taken to recover the data that was lost. As far as I know, these companies have been requested to submit manual copies for emergency registration. That is the procedure that was implemented for a long time as well. So they have to manually submit this data. The data scam. When backbench MPs go hold discussions with the chairman of the NMRA and then after coming out of the meeting make a statement that no details pertaining to COVID-19 has been lost, we are suspicious as to if something else happened here. Now the NMRA is saying that they started accepting applications manually from the 1st of September. Then the details of COVID-19 medicines were also included here. Those details have also been wiped. Who had a sudden need to shift this data on COVID-19 related medicines and equipment? If we cannot protect this data, there is an issue with the national security of the country as well. Instead of making jokes by saying that a button was hit and the data was deleted, reveal to the people the true situation behind this. 
दत्तम विहुल All trade unions in the country have united against the move to sell land in the port to Chinese companies. According to representatives of port trade unions, a discussion between the trade unions is scheduled to be held tomorrow. Denata Sri Lanka Varai Adhikari 13 acres owned by the Sri Lanka Ports Authority is to be given to the CICT dirt cheap one perch in this area is valued at 150 million rupees and no valuation has been carried out so far this is a very sad situation no tender process has been followed concerning this the lease will only generate 850000 rupees per month to the sri lanka ports authority despite being members of various political factions and various trade unions we are ready to put that thought aside and work together to protect our port stop the plans in place to privatize you did not generate any dollars into the country what we would like to say now is that the methods of generating dollars into the country must be protected at all costs endemic to our nation found nowhere else on earth a cascade system of ancient sri lanka let's make our irrigation heritage a unesco world heritage our cascading systems were built by some of our great ancient kings uh, and they built these amazing cascading systems with our natural resources without harming the environment and it serves the purpose for us even to this day So it is our responsibility to treasure and protect them for our future generations to come. So let's make our Vava cascading system a UNESCO World Heritage. Let's protect the Sri Lankan Vava. I am Natasha Watnani. Samagi Jana Balavege parliamentarian Patali Champika Ranavaka said there is a program to sell off national assets to foreign nations. Hora rahase vidili bala mandale satu yugadanavi balagare eka The foreign debt of the Yugadanavi power plant owned by the state will be paid off and completed in March next year. It is the people of this country that paid off the debt. But today the power plant has been handed over to an American company without any tender process. They started another power plant under the name Sobhava Danavi. a power plant that can generate 300 megawatts that power plant is operated by a company owned by the government that power plant is expected to receive a loan from the asian development bank however with the prevailing situation the financial backing that the power plant needs from the government has not been granted therefore no matter what they say in parliament i believe they are attempting to sell this off to an american company there is an undisclosed agreement here employees of the electricity board who care about these matters will rise up against this What will they do then? They will be suppressed through the emergency laws. Look at the York Street branch of the Bank of Ceylon, the Hilton Hotel, GOH Hotel. They are to be handed over to a businessman from Oman without any tender process. When the employees of the bank stand up to fight against these moves, they will be silenced using emergency laws to suppress these employees. A bank will say, "Okay, I'm not going to run a hazy niti of power with you." Is State Minister of Money and Capital Markets Ajit Nivard Cabral? planning on resigning from his ministerial portfolio questions were raised at the parliament as well as the cabinet media briefing today garu ajit nivad a number of newspapers had published articles regarding a rumor about you resigning from your ministerial portfolio and your parliament receipt there are also discussions about you taking up a senior position would you like to enlighten the parliament about this ek parliament ek adala nathi prashna ek kama adala ne garu Is it true that State Minister Ajit Nivard Cabral is going to resign from his ministerial portfolio and his parliamentary seat for the post of the Governor of the Central Bank? A final decision in this regard has not been made yet. That is all I can say at the moment. According to the Gazette notification issued under the Antiquities Ordinance, if any renovation or development of a vava is to be carried out, an archaeological damage assessment report must be prepared, and only if approval is granted through this process can the development be carried out. When such laws are in place, these constructions at the Parakrama Samudra are being conducted in contravention of the Antiquities Ordinance. We would like to clearly state that they are destroying the rule of law and working to give benefits to a select few. 
That is the reason why these things are being done forcibly. There is a culture that has been developed with these constructions. There is an ecosystem and also a socio-economic structure built based on this. I request for these waivers and the cascade system in our country be protected for our future generations and make them world heritage sites. मैं बहुत बात दी हूँ ठीक है लोगों को उनमें बावड़ टपाक कर लाता वो दूर रहता वास्तवमान सा हाना के तपाल को ये सुरक्षित तावे विनुएं इतनी कराना a minor tremor was reported in the Berilia village in Lunugamvehera. The tremor measuring at 2.4 on the Richter scale was reported at about 10.38 this morning. A tremor was reported in close proximity to this area in Tanamal Villa on the 24th of last month as well. We are investigating the cause of the tremor. Geologists point out that this will not have any adverse effects. There has only been one reported earthquake during that time frame of half an hour. This earthquake has taken place near the Sumatra Islands on the east side of the tectonic plate where Sri Lanka, India and Australia are located. This earthquake has taken place 10 kilometers under the Earth's crust. Scientifically speaking, these are aftershocks of an earthquake that happened on the tectonic plate. That is why we are experiencing tremors in Sri Lanka. The general public have no reason to be afraid of this situation any longer. A similar earthquake took place near the Sumatra Islands a week ago. And some good news to all Sri Lankan cricketing fans. Sri Lanka has currently won the third and final ODI against South Africa by 78 runs. The Proteas were bowled out for 125 runs. Sri Lanka clinch uh, with this win, of course, Sri Lanka clinches the victory in the entire ODI series uh, in South Africa's tour of Sri Lanka, winning two out of the three matches that were played. Now, the Sri Lankan team that participated in the 2020 Tokyo Paralympic Games returned to the island today. The Sri Lanka Automobile Exporters Association today presented two cars to Dinesh Priyanta and Samita Dulan, who won medals at the Games and brought fame to the motherland. The award ceremony was held this morning before the Sri Lankan Paralympic team left for the island. Ambassador of Sri Lanka Sanjeev Gunasekara said that the two cars were presented to Dinesh Priyanta and Samita Dulan to encourage their talents and to felicitate them. The Sri Lankan contingent that participated at the Tokyo Paralympic Games arrived in the island this evening. Sri Lanka won a gold and a bronze medal at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. Dinesh Priyanta Herat won a gold medal in the men's F46 javelin event, setting a new world record, winning the first Paralympic gold medal in the history of Sri Lankan sports. Samita Dulan won the bronze medal in the men's F-64 javelin throw. A special cabinet paper had been approved for the reward scheme of Tokyo 2020 Paralympic winners. Accordingly, a total amount of 106.62 million rupees has been allocated for the reward scheme. The special cabinet paper has been approved on the request of the Sports and Youth Minister, Namal Rajapaksa. And that's wrap of primetime news on TV1 for tonight. To follow details of these stories and more, of course, you can log on to our award-winning website, www.newsfirst.lk. I'm Charlotte Benedict for the News First team, along with our sign language interpreter for tonight, Brian De Cruz. Take care. God bless.